Welcome back to Bullaholics, the show for those who simply can't get enough of basketball. I'm your host, Sam Israel. We are joined once again by Ian Mills. Ian, we got a lot of action in the NFL going on. Tomorrow, we got the Bucks, we got the Packers, we got your Bills, we got the Chiefs. Ian, man, this is going to be crazy. But before we go into NFL, let's talk about NBA and let's talk about the Brooklyn Nets because I, I covered a small episode about the Brooklyn Nets, but I want to get another episode with Ian in it and we're going to talk about the Brooklyn Nets trade. Ian, what's your reactions of the well, and James Harden? Well, you know, obviously, so, so now you have two top 10 players in the NBA, Harden and, and, and KD, and then Kyrie, arguably probably top 20, maybe top 15. I think it depends on how much he actually plays this season and how well he plays in the playoffs. Um, but I think what's bigger to me is they mortgaged their future. I mean, we all know this, but they gave up what for this till 2028, they won't have their first round pick. Correct. I mean, here's the thing. This, this makes them pro- like, like a top three roster in the NBA. I don't think it makes them the best. I, you know, I don't think they're, I still think the Lakers are, are the favorite over them. Um, so it is like you have to win a champ. Like if you don't win a championship with this team, like this might go down as one of the worst trades of all time for the Nets. That being said, in the NBA, like all that matters is championships. No one cares about anything except really championships. Like we rate the greatest players of all time simply because simply of how many championships they have. So in that respect, I get it. In a league where, where championships are you know, number one and, and there really is no number two, I totally get that. Um, but yeah, it does kind of force them in win now mode and, and just hope that everyone stays healthy and that because in three or four years, right, like these guys are going to be getting up there in age and it's going to be a lot harder to win a championship with, you know, a 35 year old KD than it is with a 30 year old KD. So, you know, I like it because it puts them in a better position to win it all. But if they don't win it all, it might go down as one of the worst trades of all time. So, you know, it, it, it's it's interesting. Like, I, I get why they did it, but it is certainly a risky move by the Nets. And a, first off, a great move by the Rockets. The fact that they're getting that many picks for a guy who didn't want to play for them, who literally said, I want out in a press conference. Like, yeah, I mean, I get it. It makes sense. Yeah, and this reminds me of the Brooklyn Nets deja vu back in the day when they traded KG and Paul Pierce to the Nets and gave up all their first rounders. And then we saw what happened. Here they are doing it again. We'll see if history repeats itself. But I will say that Kevin, that this super team, they're not all old like Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce. So hopefully we'll see a better result. Right. Now, the, my main takeaway is this, Ian, and simple as this. This is LeBron's world, and the rest of us are living in it. It's LeBron's league, and everyone else is living in it. And the whole reason why this team was formed was to literally stop LeBron. You look at Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant constantly needs to build and form super teams in order to beat LeBron. We saw it when he left OKC to join Golden State with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. And now here he is in Brooklyn with, Ke- with Kyrie Irving and James Harden. How about Kyrie Irving in his perspective of how his life revolves around LeBron James? Well, he wanted to trade when he was with LeBron James because he wanted to be the man. Well, Ian... I don't know if he's the man now in Brooklyn. I mean, Kevin Durant, James Harden, I don't even know if Kyrie Irving would be considered to be the Robin, but never mind that. How about James Harden now? Well, James Harden didn't want to be in the West any longer with the Houston Rockets because guess what? Guess who they got blown out to twice in a row before he got traded? The Lakers. LeBron and the Lakers. The entire league revolves around LeBron James. This is an effort to defeat and overthrow LeBron James. Now, Ian, are they going to do it? I don't think I so. Don't think so. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think they're going to. You still have LeBron James. You have Anthony Davis. That team, although Brooklyn has more of a natural talent, like they have if, on paper, they have more talent. LeBron James and Anthony Davis, the synergy in LA land, it's just too much for Brooklyn. So o- overall, I just think that they're not going to have enough in the tank to defeat LeBron and the Lakers. Yeah, I, I, um, I definitely agree. Uh, two more things I want to touch on is I think it honestly might come down to if, if Kyrie shows up in the playoffs because we've seen him you know obviously with the Cavs where he was insane in the playoffs and then we saw him with the Celtics where he was you know not that good he was kind of like an average NBA player so I think that matters a lot and we're really not gonna I mean this we we might not know if this was a good trade for like five years like it could be that in 2028 the Rockets pick like the next LeBron James with the Nets pick and the Rockets automatically win whatever but um 
last thing I want to touch on about this trade was Jarrett Allen being traded for nothing is just mind boggling. I mean, he was probably the third best player, maybe their fourth behind Karis Levert before the trade. And for them to keep DeAndre Jordan, which I know uh, uh, his contract is making about 11 million a year, I believe. So it's not super easy to move. It's a lot harder to move him than Jared Allen, but you're moving. You, I mean, you, you I, like the Cavs got him for nothing. It was, it's completely. Like you, they, gave, they gave up a first round pick, I believe. Right. They, they, I, I don't know. I thought, I thought I, I didn't think they did, but either way, a first round pick, a first round pick, which will probably be, I mean, the Cavs are playing pretty well right now. I mean, they're probably going to be like, late lottery i would guess or maybe if they seek in as the eighth seed like it's gonna be a fine like it'll be an okay pick but for jared allen you take that you absolutely take that so. and he's one of the most underrated centers in the league i believe I yeah think he's one of the best defensive big men in the league right now in terms of defensively and like his blocks and his rim protection and i think the nets are gonna miss that nothing against deandre jordan but we all know why deandre jordan was starting in brooklyn over jared allen we all know why ian yeah you know the politics with Kyrie and Katie, they call the shots. This is the players oriented league. So Yeah, also also um Karis Levert leaving or Kar- Karis Levert being traded essentially I mean the, the Pacers getting rid of Victor Oladeva for Karis Levert. That's another move where I'm like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> like for who? Which which side do you think um got the other side? Well, I think it's Victor Oladipo like at one point, I mean, he's, he was kind of been injured the last two seasons or so, but at one point he was an all-star. Like he was a, he I mean, probably a bench all-star, but he was an all-star. And Karis LeVert was again, about two years ago, a very fine NBA player. And then he had injuries. So he's like, okay. It's just, it seems like one of those trades that it's like, okay. Like I didn't, I, it's not something I expected. And it's just kind of, it's I, don't agree with you. I, I don't think either team really like, like, I mean, I guess the Rockets, Right now, Mike would rather have Victor Oladipo than Karis LeVert. I think both of them are kind of like similar enough players. Maybe Victor Oladipo has, has a bit of an edge, but I don't think anyway, it was just an interesting trade, I guess. Uh, well, I think that Indiana completely trade raped the Rockets in that regard. Victor Oladipo was on his way out. They were having contract um, arguments. They weren't, they weren't getting along with the contract. Victor Oladipo is injury prone. He's older. Karis LeVert's younger. He has more upside on the next team with – that featured Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving as a third option, came off the bench and averaged 19 points. So I think the Indiana Pacers did amazing in that trade. For the Rockets, I don't know why you just should have – you just should have kept Kyrie Levert at that point, I believe. Victor Oladipo has one year left on his contract. He's been on the record saying that he wants to go to Miami. He doesn't want to stay in Houston. So I just – I'm a little bamboozled by the fact that you would let Kyrie Levert go – and trade for Victor Oladipo. So I was a little confused there for the Houston Rockets. I think with the Rockets, I mean, at this point, you're kind of in a position like, oh, we just lost one of the best players in the NBA. We got, I mean, whatever, however well they play this year, I mean, maybe they're going to push for a playoff spot, but you're probably at a point where you're going to be rebuilding, especially with that pick. So I guess taking on an expiring contract that maybe you trade at the deadline, like, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe you get a pick for him or or whatever it may be, or, or a young guy. And they just got Kevin Porter, so... For the net, for the Rockets, I think it's more or less like, yeah, we'll take on an expiring contract if it means we win an extra five games or whatever it may be. But you know, definitely, definitely, and you know what? I know on, on a previous episode, Ian, when we were discussing, you know, we had some bold predictions from the beginning of the NBA season. I said the Brooklyn Nets were not going to make the NBA Finals, but I find myself here having to make an announcement. I'm going to have to rescind my bold take because the Nets are making it to the finals now with James Harden and Kevin Durant. I think they're too much. I just want to say, I want to add here that I love James Harden's fit with Brooklyn. I feel like in Brooklyn, you're playing in Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Nets, that's a street ball culture. Not only do they play the win games, but they play to entertain people. And this is going to be one of the most entertaining teams to watch in the NBA. They're like a walking circus. You got seven footer who can take the ball up the court and shoot anywhere on the field over anyone. Cause he's so tall. You have James Harden with who can shoot his step back threes. No one else can replicate it. And Kyrie Irving's ball handling skills. They're all, they all have like their own like signature unstoppable skill. And that's really important in the playoffs because in the playoffs, the other team of game plan to try and stop your, 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 like your system as a whole. So like you can stop the Bucks, Giannis driving in the rim and then, you know, dishing it out. But you can't really stop the intangibles. And I think this Brooklyn Nets team, you know, Kyrie Irving said on a podcast, which got him in trouble with LeBron. Um, listen, I have someone else in Kevin Durant that can shoot that last shot. Well, now he has two people because James Harden could do that too. So overall, I'm super excited for Brooklyn. Though I will say, the last thing I will say, Ian, is, you know, as a suffering Knicks fan, 
This could have been New York Knicks. This could have been the Knicks. Like, if we, you know, if Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving signed with New York, we could have easily, you know, created a trade. We could have traded away RJ Barrett and Mitchell Robinson or something for James Harden. The big three should have been in New York. It should have been the Knicks. But you know what, Ian? I'm happy. You know why? Not because the Knicks lost to your Sacramento Kings yesterday, but because even though the Brooklyn Nets are the seventh seed in the East, guess who's the eighth seed? New York Knicks. My New York Knicks. Julius Randle, too much to handle. Emmanuel quickly, too quick with his ball handling skills, with his scoring. RJ Barrett's turning into a superstar. So I'm hyped up. You know what? We didn't even need them anyway. You know why, Ian? Because look at all the media drama around Kyrie Irving. Ian, as you can tell, I'm, talk, I'm trying to talk myself out of this. You know, I'm trying to talk myself out of having KD and Kyrie. I'm just rambling on here, and I'm going to digress here and just, just give it back to you because I'm, I'm, I'm getting upset now. Just- no, I get you. I, I get it. But, you know, actually, you know, uh, we talked about it last episode, or the last episode I was in, um, like about Kyrie. I think, I mean, a lot of stuff was coming by him in the last week. He seems to have actually left the game a little bit for a good reason. So, and I said that a week ago, I defended, or two weeks or whatever it might have been, I defended Kyrie then, and I'm still obviously staying Here's with Here's my thing. The reason why he left, I completely, I completely resonate with that. You know, I think mental health is an extremely underrated topic, um, and that people need to pay more attention to that, no doubt. Now, my one problem I had with Kyrie Irving is, not that you owe it to, your, to the fans necessarily, but you're telling me you couldn't text your teammates, you couldn't text your coach or the organization that you play for. My problem wasn't the actual topic or the actual issue of why he didn't play, but it was the way in which he communicated that. And I think that that's a really important topic. And if he, if he was more communicative and more, he spoken out more about it to his teammates and his coaches, that would have been fine. You don't have to even go to the fans or the press. But, you know, the fact that Steve Nash and Kevin Durant didn't even know what was going on, I, I don't know. I, I didn't love that. But overall, good reason that he was out for. And it's good to have him back. He's looked really good so far. He had 38 points in their last outing and 37 points in the one before that, I believe. And he's shooting, like, basically over 50% too. So he looks legitimate. In that offense, in order for it to work too, and this is the last thing I'm going to say before we move on, James Harden has to be the facilitator. Because it, it's weird because Kyrie Irving's the point guard. But really, like, James Harden should be the point guard. He's more of a point guard. Kyrie Irving's more of a go-to scorer, uh, more of a scorer. Kevin Durant can also dish the ball out. And I think they're also underrated defenders, Kevin Durant and James Harden. But overall, James Harden needs to be more of a facilitator for that team. And in terms of the defensive criticisms they're getting, it's ridiculous because James Harden is an above-average defender. We saw it in the playoffs last season when he blocked Luke Dort. And Kevin Durant's also an underrated defender and should be an all-defensive team, first team. That's um, it. I mean, uh, they, they just let the Cavs score like 130 in consecutive games. The worst offense in the NBA, the, the Cavs. Scored, you know, 130. First game. The first game. It was two, it was two straight games. It was two ah. straight games. Whatever. But, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. We'll see. Only uh, Time will tell. I think they'll be fine. They'll figure it out. Defensively, they will figure it out. But. Ian, we don't, they don't need defense. You know their assistant coaches? It's Mike D'Antoni. Oh, there you go. Double the offense, half the defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There it is. All right. Let's go on. Let's stop talking about the NBA for a bit. Let's go on to the NFL, Ian. This is the moment you've been waiting for, Ian, because your Buffalo Bills are now taking over the AFC, apparently. They now find themselves in, in, they now find themselves in the M- AFC championship game on Sunday. They'll play at 640, and right now the Chiefs are the three-point favorite for that game. Ian, what are your predictions? All right, look here. I've been, you know, going into this game, I, I knew it was going to be like – like, obviously, the Chiefs are going to be favored. The Chiefs are at home. Uh, Mahomes is the best player in the NFL this year. Maybe Rodgers played better than he did. Uh, but still, Mahomes is the best player in the NFL. Um, they might have the best roster in the NFL. They have, you know, well, not the best, but Mahomes makes up enough for the fact that the Chiefs don't have to have a perfect roster, right? Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey are maybe the best receiver tight end tandem. Clyde edwards helaire you know, struggled as of late, but he's been, I'm sorry, like in the second half of the year when he was injured for a couple of games, I believe. Um, but he has been, I mean, he's had very, very good games, especially early on in the season. I get why, you know, they're favored. I, I entirely understand why they're, why they're the favorites. Uh, but the Bills are winning this game. Um, you know, I don't want to be a coward and say, you know, the favorite is going to win because, look, Josh Allen, it, here's, here's the way I'll put it. The Bills held Lamar Jackson to three points 
in a windy game. The Ravens don't throw the ball, and they and they still only score three points. Um, so you know their defense shows up. If their defense shows up like it did last week, and their offense shows up like it did the last couple of weeks in the season, I don't know how the Bills lose this game. I mean, they they're such a complete team. It's it's crazy to me that like. I look at Twitter, I look at, I watch shows, I watch ESPN, I watch Barstool, whatever it is. Everyone has the Chiefs. No one's taking the Bills in this game. And and I'm just wondering, like, how much of a coward do you have to be to take the Chiefs? It's like at the beginning of the year saying the Patriots are going to win the Super Bowl for the last 15 years. Like, yeah, I mean, they won every other Super Bowl for the last 20 years. Like, I'm not going to say that that's a bad pick, but it's like, have some guts, have some heart. Pick the underdog, even if it's not even that big of an underdog. The Bills are just barely behind the Chiefs right now. I mean, I don't think it's a huge gap. The Chiefs, with mind you, Patrick Mahomes for the, played with the first three quarters of that game. They were not blowing out the Browns. The Browns were keeping up with them, if not for a touchback, which is a bad rule in the NFL, uh, where Rashard Higgins fumbled it out of the back of the end zone. The Chiefs might have won that game. I mean, like, the Chiefs have not dominated a team in weeks. I mean, they almost lost to the Atlanta Falcons at home, if not for a young way who, who is maybe the best kicker in the NFL, missed kick. I mean, the Chiefs have not played a very good game in a couple of weeks, and the Bills haven't played their best, week, best game in the playoffs as of yet. That being said, I still think – I think the Bills have showed flashes this year of being the best team in the NFL especially down the stretch. I think they're going to play it together. I think they'll take care of the Chiefs, and I think they're going to the Super Bowl for the first time since 1993. Thank you very much. Go Bills. You know, I'm, I'm Ian, I say it as a Dicks fan all the time. A man can dream. But I will say, I think you owe it to your viewers that – you tell them to take the money out right now. Take the money out of the bills. The money was in there in the beginning of the season. And, it, you know, you got a lot of dividends. You know, it was – you were getting a lot of interest off that money. But I think now it's time. Tell your viewers, be responsible. I know it's hard to do because you have a conflict of interest because you love the team with your, all of your heart. But just – you know, you just know that, you know, there's someone named Patrick Mahomes on the other team that the bills do not have. You know, before I even talk about this magical figure, say, the Buffalo Bills. I, I, I do want to give you guys Patrick a challenge. Mahomes, Buffalo Bills. Let me just say, I, want to be I, want, I, I do want to give you guys a challenge. I, Buffalo go in Bills. And to dig in. I want to be a little more positive here before I, I go in and begin to dig in, you know, to your take right now, you know, go into your pick. You know, I think the Bills are, you know, they're going to rule the AFC East for the foreseeable future. Josh Allen's 24 years old. He's been improving. He improved this season drastically. You know, he now has a 69% uh, completion rate. He had a 59% completion rate last year. He went from 20 to 37 touchdowns. So he's getting better. He's ascending, and they're going to be a great team in the AFC East, Ian. But this game, look, it's not going to be a total – it's not all bad they lose. They're going to lose, Ian. I'm sorry. The Bills are going to lose. But it won't all be bad because they're going to gain a lot of experience playing in a high, you know, a high caliber game. But you see, Ian, here's the problem. The Kansas City Chiefs already have the experience. And they have the experience because they had someone who didn't need to have the experience to win the Super Bowl. We look at Patrick Mahomes, his first year in the league starting for the Kansas City Chiefs. He wins the MVP award in the 2018-2019 season, and he went to the AFC Championship game and basically lost to Tom Brady in overtime because he didn't even have a chance to respond to Tom Brady. Think about this, Ian. In that game, 30 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Kansas City is down by three. They are at their own 20-yard line. They have to get in field goal range. Patrick Mahomes does a magical drive, 60-yard drive in the last 30 seconds of the game to even up the game to go to overtime. He is there in the clutch moments, and he has proven he didn't need to lose games and get better. He didn't just need to get better. He was already there, Ian. We look at the game the season after that in 2020. They win the Super Bowl against the San Francisco 49ers. Oh, did I forget to mention they were down 20 to 10 in the fourth quarter? Wait, did I also forget to mention that in the, in the divisional round that year, 
They were down 24 to zero to the Houston Texans and Patrick Mahomes came back once again. You know what, Ian, here's the problem. They're just an explosive offense. You can't stop them. They have the fastest land mammal in history in Tyree Kill. They have Travis Kelsey. They have Patrick Mahomes. You can't defeat this Kansas City Chiefs team. They are for real, Ian. I'm sorry to tell you this. I am a friend of yours. I am looking out for your overall health. Ian, do not dilute yourself. Do not think that your team has even a slimmer of hope. There's no hope against Patrick Mahomes because Patrick Mahomes, no matter what you do, you cannot stop him. He is going to win this game easily, and he's going to win this year's Super Bowl as well. Yeah, you made one mistake. Well, two mistakes, actually. Two mistakes in that, in that barbaric rant that, you know, you subjected our viewers to. Two things you missed. You said the Bills don't have a creature like Patrick Mahomes. That's just inaccurate. I mean, that's just inaccurate. It is. Josh so you're trying to compare Patrick Mahomes listen, to Josh Allen? Listen, 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 listen. This year, their season's extremely comparable. Ridiculously comparable. And the Bills played a million top – I think it was six top ten defenses, all of which they won. Okay? Listen, 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 listen. You're talking – you know, I talked about overtime. He sent the Patriots and, and Chiefs to overtime. He, uh, uh, you know, beat up on the Texans when he was down – 24 nothing and, and you know all of this. You're forgetting one thing. One one big thing. That was last year. That was last year. You know who the Bills best receiver was last year? John Brown. John Brown. And he's he's barely played this year. And mostly because of injuries. But right now, there's a good argument that he's their fourth best receiver. It had a tremendous season, Ian. He's their fourth best receiver. Look, they had a tremendous season, Ian. I'm just saying. I'm, just saying, saying, I'm sorry. They're not being the Kansas Bills? City. The, the it, Chiefs. There's levels to this, Ian. There's levels to this. They the Chiefs are the same levels as Patrick Mahomes. The Chiefs have not played. The Chiefs have not dominated any team in weeks. They've been. They've been. Le- I mean, they've been like uninspiring. They've been a team that you watch and you're like, oh, like they're fraud. Like when just, you're so they, dominant they, over the, the past couple of years. You you can you can you can zone out you can zone by a little bit. You don't have to blow out every single team. But when it counts in the high leverage moments, Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs have shown time and time again that they are always there. And that look, they're in the, they're in the, they 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 basically slept their way to this game, Ian. And the Bills are a great team. But Ian, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There's not enough to beat this Kansas City team. The Kansas City Chiefs beat Brian Hoyer by a touchdown. They beat Jared Stidham and Brian Hoyer by a touchdown. The Bills beat the healthy Patriots by 30. So this you're, is, you're pointing with the one game. You're pointing the one game. I'm just, I'm just, just pointing, pointing out. Game. The Bills but, now have a chance to beat the Chiefs. Yeah, in the one game. When the, Bills, the, past when the Bills and the Chiefs played, when the, when the Bills and the Chiefs played in week six, the Chiefs won, by, I believe it was by eight or nine, right? It was a rainy game. The Bills are not a run team. They don't run the ball. We saw that last week. They throw the ball. 50 times a game because Josh Allen's just that good and they don't really need the run, de- run game. On a rainy, windy night in October, the Bills struggle to throw the ball. That happens. That happens. And the Chiefs, so and they have a better run game. I'll give you that. The Bills, if, if, depending whether, the Bills match up extraordinarily well. I think the Chiefs' defense is okay. I don't think it's great. I think Ladarius Sneed is a bit overrated. I think Stephon Diggs destroys him this week. I mean, at a point where when you're – your best court – what's up? Look, I, I'm not saying that the Bills aren't going to put up points against the Chiefs. They will definitely do that. But do you believe that the duo of Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs can outscore the duo of Patrick Mahomes and Tyree Kill? Oh, wholeheartedly. Because, listen – It's going to be a high-scoring game. Yes, because, listen, Patrick Mahomes set a record for most dropped interceptions this year with 16 dropped interceptions. He's a great – he's an extraordinarily good player. He's not – he is not immune to making mistakes. Same thing with Josh Allen. Obviously, we've seen that this year. He's made mistakes, but every quarterback does. I'm saying the Bills' defense, if they play as well as they did last week, and again, of course, you're, you're, they're much different offenses. The Ravens are not the same offense as the Chiefs by, Chiefs by any means. But if the Bills can do- dominate the line of scrimmage like they did last week against the Ravens, get pressure on Mahomes. I mean, you have Trey White, 
Taron Johnson, we just had a pick six. Levi Wallace, who's been kind of shaky. But then you have Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer, maybe the best safety duo in the league. I'm willing to bet Mahomes makes just, you know, not a great decision at some point in this game. Costs, uh, sorry, coughs up the ball, and the Bills have an advantage to take the lead. Uh, you know, it's not that I think Mahomes is – I mean, Mahomes is as good as you can get at the, at the position. But regardless of how good you are – mistakes will be made and we've seen that this year with him so I think it'll be a close game and it'll come down to if the Bills can make Mahomes make a mistake and, and the same thing might be said for the for the Chiefs the I Chiefs mean, that, goes more, that goes more for the Bills I would say Ian because if you make one little mistake against the Kansas City offense they're they're the most explosive offense in the league they will they will completely take you up on that and you'll lose a game because of that because they're they're that explosive you know they you guys cannot make th- that much mistakes against Mahomes and the Chiefs. So it was was twenty two points against the Browns explosive? Was seventeen points against the Falcons explosive? You know, I mean, like they're they have the they have the potential, and we've seen it in the past. But right now, this year, we have not seen it in a couple of weeks. All right, I am going to rant. I, I tried so hard. I tried. I so can't. Hard to you, Ian. you know what? You know what? Let's let's wager. Let's 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 throw a wager on this. A friendly. Let's throw a friendly wager. All right. Uh, if the Bills beat the Chiefs, hmm, let me think. Let me think. Uh, you, I'll, I'll, I'll make a shirt. Okay, I'm gonna make a shirt. I'm gonna write something like, uh, Ian Mills was right or Ian Mills was correct. Ian Mills is a genius. I'll wear it. Written on the shirt. I'm gonna make you wear it. Okay. Yeah, I'll wear it for a week around campus. Just walk around, do your thing. Oh, you know, yeah. Class. yeah. And and you know what? If you're wrong, you're wearing my. You're wearing New York Knicks gear. New okay. York yeah. I that's want I'm, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely. I want a Julius Randle jersey. I want a Manuel Quickly shoes. I want I, a Jr. hat. I want. I, I want on the front of the shirt. Ian Mills is a genius. On the back of the shirt, I'm an idiot. How, does that does that suffice? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. All right, sounds good to me. You got you guys witness this. Yes, can't wait. There's a little wager, Ian. I don't know why you did that to yourself, but you know what? Sometimes. Mm-hmm. Folks, you, you got to learn the hard way. So we'll see I'm what not- happens. Maybe, maybe there'll be a miracle. There'll be the Buffalo miracle. Who knows? But let's talk about the next matchup in the NFL. We'll go now to the NFC matchup, the NFC, champ- the NFC championship game, Sunday at 3 p.m. when the Bucks take on the Packers. Ian, are we going to disagree again in this matchup? Right now the Packers are the 3.5 favorite. Who do you have in this game? Well, I'm not as you know passionate about this game as I obviously am the Bills game, but – Aaron Rodgers is playing better football than anyone else in the NFL right now. Uh, Devontae Adams is playing – well, I guess you could probably argue that Stephon Diggs and him are playing similarly well. But I'm going to say Devontae Adams might be better than playing pretty much more dominantly than any, any other receiver in the NFL right now. Aaron Jones had an insane week last week. Uh, I don't know if the Bucks can outscore them. Um, simply because, right, we saw last week, like, yes, Tom Brady beat – beat Drew Brees last week who doesn't really have an arm who had a class long I mean he's Drew Brees is not good I mean up until you know in that game he was not good in this year he was not that good um Tom Brady a little bit a little bit was exposed last week with his lack of athleticism he doesn't have the problems Drew Brees has but he's certainly getting to a point where yeah, he's struggling to throw the ball downfield. Can he still do it? Yeah, but are there times where he lofts the ball up there, and I'm like, oh wow, that's a that wasn't pretty, you know? Absolutely. And I think Aaron Rodgers is just playing better than Tom Brady. Um, I think he's he's you know the Packers have a better roster. The thing is, is is the Bucks defense has a, an extraordinarily good run defense, which is you know good, but. Aaron Rodgers isn't affected by that. You know, it doesn't affect Aaron Rodgers or Devontae Adams. So I'm taking Packers here. I think the Packers win by about a touchdown. I'm not as confident in this pick as I am in the previous pick. That being said, that being said, I might add, um, this game is in Lambeau. It might be cold. That doesn't hinder Tom Brady. Obviously, you played in New England for years. So usually you would think a Tampa Bay team would struggle in Lambeau. That's not the case this time. Um, so, you know, that might help that because because Tom Brady might be one of the greatest cold weather quarterbacks of all time. That being said, Aaron Rodgers is two. So I don't think it really behooves either team. Um, 
I'm going to take the Packers simply because it's not that I think Ty Brady's bad. I just think he's not as good as Aaron Rodgers right now. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to win this game, and it's because of people like you, Ian, that continuously rule out Tom Brady and says that Tom Brady cannot win games. He can't do it anymore. He's too old. He's not as good as he used to be. He's 43 years old. Oh, my God. Ian, listen, I would take Tom Brady if he only had one leg in this game. Tom Brady, whenever people bet against Tom Brady, he proves them wrong, and he shows them. And this is time and time again, Tom Brady's legacy. The, guy, the kid that was drafted in the sixth round, he's never going to stop proving people wrong, even at age 43, Ian. And listen, I want to start by saying that this is going to be a very good game. It's going to be a historical game. It's cool because of the storyline. You have the, one of the best QBs right now in the game, and Aaron Rodgers probably going to win this MVP. So he'll have three MVPs to his name. Along, you look also in his resume, Aaron Rodgers. He's a two-time passing touchdown leader, a three-time passing rate leader. He has two seasons with – he's thrown over 45 touchdowns, Ian. So he's probably right now arguably one of the most talented QBs in the game aside from Patrick Mahomes. But listen, Tom Brady – this is like – Tom Brady is like the Michael Jordan of the NFL. Michael Jordan had the last documentary, The Last Dance. This is going to be one of the best episodes on – Tom Brady's the last dance because Tom Brady once again is going to prove why he is better than Aaron Rodgers as a whole. Because even though Rodgers is better talent wise, Tom Brady has the experience. And in these high leverage games, in the championship games, guess what Aaron Rodgers' record is? One and three, as opposed to Tom Brady, who is nine and four in championship games. Aaron Rodgers, let's not forget, has only made the Super Bowl once in 2010 and he won it. But ever since then, Tom Brady has went, went to the Super Bowl five times. Tom Brady has went, been there a total of nine times. Tom Brady performs better in high leverage moments. And Aaron Rodgers, I'm not trying to say he's not a great player, but in the playoffs, he's had shortcomings in those championship games. Why has he only made one Super Bowl in the past 10 years, Ian? Listen, Tom Brady, once again, he could have easily retired. Tom Brady could have easily retired and not went to Tampa Bay. But guess what, Ian? He's always looking for new challenges. He said, I don't need you, Bill Belichick. I'm going to create my own team. I'm going to recruit my own players make my own team. I'll recruit Ralph Gronkowski. I'll recruit Antonio Brown. Then I'll have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. I'll have the offense under Bruce Arians. Now Tom Brady has a chance to be the, one of the first players to play a Super Bowl game in the, in the place, in the, in the same stadium as, the, as the, um, the team that's hosting it. So I think Tom Brady – is going to rise to the occasion. And because of people like you that continuously count out Tom Brady, he's going to win this game against Aaron Rodgers. And it's going to be one of the best episodes in Tom Brady's The Last Dance. You asked a question, and you said, why is Aaron Rodgers only been in the Super Bowl once in 10 years? Um, and and you were talking about we're comparing Rodgers and Brady. And obviously, Ro, uh, Roger, sorry, Brady has had a lot more team accomplishments than Rodgers. And I think in, in, in football, at least, we, we weigh those above individual accomplishments. And I think that's fair. That being said, let me ask you this question. Who is Tom Brady's coach for the last 20 years? Bill Belichick. And why, why is he now in Tampa Bay? No, listen, listen, I'm, not finished. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Aaron Rodgers' quarterback for his entire career has been outside the last two years has been Mike McCarthy, Mike McCarthy. He, he is already, I, I legitimately believe this to every part of my core that he is the worst coach in the NFL. I don't know how he has a job anymore. The fact that the Cowboys hired him because he said he knows analytics is ridiculous. He is the worst coach in the NFL. And Aaron Rodgers had him for, what, 10 years almost? I think more than that, honestly. It's – no, I don't think it was more than 10 years. Um, but it's crazy to think that he had as much success as he did in Rodgers with Mike McCarthy as head coach. Um, and this is the first time Aaron Rodgers has had a home – uh, championship game. I, I don't blame him for not having as much Super Bowl success as Brady simply because it isn't entirely his fault, right? Like, he's never really had, I mean, outside of Greg Jennings, which was years ago, he's never really had a number one. Now, Devonta Adams is obviously probably the best receiver in the NFL, so that's great. Um, and they've never really had a great defense, uh, and they've also always had one of the worst coaches in the NFL. Now, Mike before I think, is I mean, it's hard to tell who, how much is him and how much is Rodgers, but I'd like to think Mike LaFleur is a lot better of a coach than Mike McCarthy. Um, so, you know, I, I think the Bucks are fine. Like, I, th I mean, obviously they're a very good team. They're in the NFC Championship. And that, you know, that's a great accomplishment in itself. But it's just 
it's hard for me to say that this year, Tom Brady, I'm saying specifically this year, Tom Brady can outplay Aaron Rodgers. It's hard for me to even believe that. I know what happened in week six where Rodgers had two early interceptions that kind of, I mean, one of them wasn't as fault as Devontae Adams' fault. But the last 15 weeks or so, or 14 weeks or so, there have been very few teams, or there hasn't been a single player better than Aaron Rodgers. So, you know, I think it's hard for me to believe that Brady would be able to beat him. I think it's possible, but I'm, I'm leaning towards Packers. Something else, another point I need to bring up, because I spoke a lot about Tom Brady, but I also need to give some credit to that Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense under Todd Bowles. Um, in that last game, Drew, you know, Tom Brady didn't have – an amazing it wasn't a spectacular game but their defense was amazing and they had they forced four turnovers and they they made Drew Brees had a completion rate of 57 percent so yeah. besides having to overcome Tom Brady and the experience I'm not saying Aaron Rodgers is I'm not saying like it's, it's his fault that he hasn't had that experience obviously you're right but he's had that he's had he's been able to play the privilege of play under Bill Belichick but that experience is important in these kind of games because Brady's had more, more exposure to these high leverage games. But their defense as well under Todd Bro Bowles, I'm looking at their defense, I'm looking at Tom Brady, and overall, I just think that Tom Brady and that defense in Tampa Bay is going to be too much to overcome. And the weaponry that they have with the wide receivers and the fact that Tom Brady now has a chance to win his seventh. Uh, yeah, well, two, two things I want to end on real quick. I think the last 15 years, uh, probably about 10 or so years, we've always wanted to see a Rodgers versus Brady Super Bowl. And obviously this isn't the Super Bowl because now obviously he plays in the NFC. But it's pretty cool that we're going to get that game before they retire. Uh, you know, this is a game we've been wanting to see for yes years. So it's really sick to be able to see that. Wish it was a Super Bowl a couple of years ago, but it is what it is. Um, last thing, I got I got another wager for you. You up for it? You got another way to, all right. You know, I'll hear this one out. I'll hear this one out. Oh, hear this one out? Okay. I so, will. if the Packers win this game, it's another shirt bet. We don't, it doesn't have to be a shirt, but I'm just – I'm thinking. No. Okay. Front of the shirt, upstate rocks, back of the shirt, Long Island sucks. Thoughts. I want thoughts. I want, I want some th- thoughts on this. Wait, upstate rocks in the front of the shirt and Long Island sucks. On the back of the shirt, yeah. Just uh, – I'm not in love with the bet, but, I, you know – I certainly like it. I might have to do some revisions to this bet. I gotta think. Okay. Okay. I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on that one. I'm gonna right. hold fair enough. It, it wouldn't it wouldn't even be that fun anyway because like it would be obvious that like it was it's like so if I you know people come up to me like oh you made a bet right because like everyone knows that there's no such thing like up oh, there's no way upstate's better than Long Island so it's just like it's not even like fun at that point it's just like so obvious so mm-hmm. I'll have to I'll have to further, further discuss that one and. Maybe we'll make some revisions to that bet, but I'm open to that. We'll we'll okay. discuss that off the air, maybe, and maybe um we'll come back with the viewers and we'll have you a we'll have a bet. That, 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 that Bills that, bet that we have is a bet. That's like so. So just to recap, I have to wear Nick's stuff. Yes, we'll wear like a Julius. Wear You'll wear Nick's stuff, and if the Bills somehow win in one of the millions of alternate universes, all right, I'll be forced to. What was I going to do again? I forgot. Was, Ian Mills is a genius on the front. I'm an idiot on the back. Yeah. Ian, I like that. Ian Mills got one bet right. Like he got he got one bet right. One bet? I've been betting on the Bills all year. I'm making Oh yeah. free money, baby. It, it's too bad, you know? Cause it, the saying is, you sell high, you buy low. The Bills are high right now. You can sell them now and get a, get a large return, but you're not doing it. And for that reason... You're gonna regret it later on. Crazy. They said that last. I'm just trying to help you with friends. I'm just trying to help you. They said that same thing last week. They said that same thing last week. I've been through this as a Knicks fan. I'm just trying to help you out. The Knicks had such a good record a couple of days ago, a couple weeks ago. They're they're still good now, but this is the reason I'm here and was so happy about them because I knew the moment when you feel like everything is gonna go your way is when it all tumbles down. Well, they're under 500, and I'm sure they wish they picked Tyrese Halliburton over over Toppin, but that's a different debate. That's a different debate. We're not going to talk about that right now. We're not going to talk about that. I don't want to get into that. I'm stopping my belief that Obi Toppin's going to be a superstar one day. I'm not stopping that yet. And also, we have Daniel Quickly. He's the point guard for the Knicks. We don't even need Halliburton. Tyrese Halliburton is a star right now, but whatever. It is what we'll see. He's good. He, 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 he's, been, he's been really good. He's been yeah. – he was, he, was, he was good. You know, I, I was thinking about – 
if we didn't select Obi Toppin, he would have been a good point guard for the Knicks for sure. And I don't even know where I stand on this, but you know what, Ian, you can't go back in time and change the past. You can just look into the future. So we'll look into the future. We'll see if the Bills can overcome the Chiefs, and we'll see if the Packers or Tom Brady will be victorious. So it'll be, it'll be fun to watch for sure. Anyway, that's the end of our segments today. Thank you guys for watching. Next week, we'll see either Ian in, Knicks, in a Knicks jersey or me wearing that I suck. Yeah, so, so well, that'll be on campus. We'll have we'll make we'll make that on campus. I mean, we'll make the video. Okay. We'll have an episode before that, but we'll, yeah, we'll, TV crew that you know show yeah exactly. Right. People have to be able to see it. Yeah, the TV crew will get the you know we'll, we'll get to show off our uh, outfits. So we'll see yeah. what happens. Get ready for that one. I appreciate you, man. I have a good one, guys. Peace out, guys.